Welcome to Authentic Living with Roxanne, a place where we have conscious conversations about things that really matter in our lives. And now, here's your host, Roxanne Derhage. Hi, it's Roxanne Durhaj. I'm a mental health and wellness specialist and a corporate leadership executive coach. My new book, Return on Relationships, launching on June 10th, 2023, introduces the concept of return on relationships, a new metric for business growth. Grab a copy. Let me walk you through how to be a better leader and provide you with exclusive tools to guide you in building your authentic leadership legacy. You can find Link in the show notes to pre-order your copy today. Hope you enjoy. Our interview last week was so good that we decided to turn it into a two-part series. If you missed last week, you'll find the link in the show notes. It's not mandatory that you listen, but we want to make sure that you don't miss out on this amazing conversation. Hi, everyone. It's Roxanne Durhach. Thanks for tuning in again to the, today to Authentic Living with Roxanne. Today, I have a, a colleague that I think I've just recently met. We've been spending a lot of time together, Sabrina Shaver. Uh, Sabrina uh, has a quite a fascinating background uh, that intrigued me. Uh, and uh, we recently did an event uh, for International Women's Day with uh, women, uh, younger uh, women, I would say mostly across size and sectors of companies that were talking about work-life balance, which was actually quite amazing. So her background is she's not only a corporate litigator, but she's a behavior, she studied behavioral analysis. And I'm going to be intrigued by that story about what kind of got her into doing what she does. And, and she works with teams. She's uh, working to figure out what's most autonomous ways that teams can work together. And she's predominantly in the tech sector. So Sabrina, thanks so much for taking the time to spend with us today. Oh, Roxanne, you are wonderful. Thank you so much for having me. Like you said, we've been doing a couple of different speaking engagements together lately, and each topic is more riveting than the next. This is something that couldn't be more relevant right now. It's a passion of both of ours. So I'm excited to dive in. It'll be fun. Exactly. Now let's talk a little bit about, um, we know uh, presently in the world, there's so much going on. Obviously the tech sector um, has been uh, gravely impacted. I think there's a lot of um, layoffs that have happened or are going to continue to happen. But obviously, there's amazing things also happening in the tech sector. What are you seeing out there in reference to um, kind of the pulse of the tech sector in reference um, so, to all these changes that are occurring? You know, it's um, it's unlike anything I've seen. And, and the pandemic certainly helped accelerate so much of this. You know, we went through this hiring craze where, you know, CRO of giant company would call me and say, you'll never believe how much they just poached this guy from me about, you know, you'll never believe how much this bonus is of these people they poached. So we went this went through this insane hiring craze to now these mass layoffs. And again, some we support some of the largest organizations in the world, you know? Um, and so we get an inside perspective that maybe you don't always get to see and um or in, at least until it's much later um so there's still plenty more to come and um you know between supply chain issues manufacturing issues obviously different wars and and um geopolitical conflict is maybe a safe way to say it um you know there's a lot of unrest and uncertainty and i think um in fact i was just reading some you know some research on this literally just yesterday um you know what people are looking for now are resilient teams helping retain the talent that they do have because you have to do the same if not more work with less so now you not only do you have a demotivated team which one of my sort of mini expertise is around motivation so you've got a demotivated team who have to do more with less they're all remote they don't feel connected or maybe they feel semi-connected um, and it's a lot and they're worried about their job. So now they've got all kinds of hormones triggered and, 
You know, we were, it, it's just a, it's a, it's a, it's a mind mess. And so, um, from a team's perspective, from a leadership perspective, even as folks who are, who are teammates, who are influencing the culture of their teams, people want to feel like they're being invested in. Enablement has never been more important. You know, here's the other interesting thing is the tech industry is, is rapidly moving to solution sales. We're not talking about, hey, look at this really cool new widget that spins even faster than this widget that we sold you last year. Or, hey, it's, it's tech refresh time and you've had that stuff for three years, let's get you a new box. Now you're talking boxes and wires and software and it's, it's incredibly complex. And now not only are you selling to IT people, you're selling to OT, to the business side of things. So you have brand new relationships you need to make who have totally different interests and you're worried about your job. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. a total cluster, but in, in these kinds of times comes an enormous amount of opportunity if you can leverage it, if you can get on, you know, if you can get a hold of it. And so part of it is, you know, if we can enable our teams and show them, look, we're invested in you, you're important to us, it also equips them with the right skills so that they can be successful. Sometimes I say to my team, like if I've got a salesperson who maybe hasn't had a sale in a minute, I'll say, you just need a win. As humans, sometimes we just need a win. And so I've noticed that the more you can invest in your people and enablement is probably one of the strongest ways you can do that right now, because it can be remote, it can be funny, you can have prizes, you can do gamification, you can be silly and still learn. It kind of ties in all those different pieces while still kind of telling them without telling them, I'm invested in you, you're worth investing, so your job is a little bit safer. Those are the kinds of things that I'm seeing really work when it comes to retaining talent and nurturing a culture for growth and more success. So lately, obviously, I'm sure you've dealt with some companies where they've had massive layoffs and, and, oh, yeah. and, and they've, you know, they've got these teams and these people, they're worried probably about retaining who's, who's left. Obviously, I often say that, you know, you have to take care of as much of the people that are left behind as the people that are about to go or who yes. have left, right? You really have to address that. So tell me some of the things that you've seen that people have done poorly mm. um, at this time and some things that people really, like you talked a little about enablement, um, hybrid, uh, you know, is, is hybrid an option again, or is it, are people mostly staying remote or how are they kind of, I often say we're human beings, we need connection, we need we need that fun. We need um, right. to be able to, 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 you know, just to laugh and giggle about nothing and not talk about work sometimes because work always gets done. So what are some of the things that people aren't doing or haven't done so well that you've seen and some of the things that they should start considering? Because from what I'm hearing, kind of this lag from, you know, with, with things with the recession and all the other things that's happening globally, it may be a couple of years before we are, kind of get back to a, a space of kind of consistency. I think it'll be a minute. I do think it'll yeah. be a minute. And I think we'll see some roller coasting. We'll see some peaks and, you know, well, I think this is not going to be a, a steady downward state. I think we're going to, you know, see ebbs and flows. At least maybe that's a little Pollyanna of me, but that's what I anticipate. Um, some things I'm seeing like absolutely don't do, you know, there's this, there's this narrow uh, piece of the IT industry and, and they tend to be more your legacy leaders. Um, that just don't believe in this idea of culture or, you know, they're like, ah, oh, it's too, I have a very, very funny, very close friend of mine at AWS. He's a leader over there. Is <laughs> just a funny act, just a funny human in general. And he calls me up and he's like, ah, oh, these millennials and you guys with your, you know, your beers, you know, on tap in the office and your, what are those balls, those yoga balls that kids sit on yes. and everything. And I'm like, ah, oh, you know, you got to do that stuff. And, and he's one of these, wonderful people that you can kind of banter with. He'll be open-minded enough to kind of hear you out. And I love, you know, I love that kind of conversation. And so, you know, we were talking about it and he's like, okay, so maybe I do see some value. But I think if you're so close-minded that you go, this feeling stuff, this hippy dippy trippy stuff is not for me. It's not for my organization. You're missing out. You're really missing out. I had a mentor tell me years ago, and it will always stay with me. Never forget the human element. That applies to everything you do, whether you're launching a product, 
launching a campaign, leading a team, leading a company, leading a family, anything and everything you do, never forget the human element. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's so brilliant and it's so simple. Um, and I think once you leave that out, people will begin to leave you. They, they want to feel connected. Now you, you asked a brilliant question. Well, how do you get there then? Well, <laughs> that's so much easier said than done. In my experience, again, I'm one human out of 8 billion. So take it for what it's worth statistically, I guess not much. Um, but you know, um, I, I find that you have to get a pulse for what kind of a team you have. We have a very, uh, independent and asynchronous team. They are all over the world. In fact, I have very few people who live in like close pockets other than like in New York and Chicago and Idaho. I, ironically, we've got a ton of people in Idaho right now, uh, <laughs> but you know, some in UK kind of stuff, but they're, they're so, they're such a, you know, dispersed team. It's nearly impossible for us to get together. And a lot of organizations still have a travel ban. You know, many of the largest tech companies that we support have a travel ban right now. So, you know, get the pulse. Some like doing happy hours. You know, if you're supporting a team that maybe there's people who are sober on the team or maybe whatever, it just depends. Maybe you do something different, like they've done different cooking things and stuff like that. That's not my team per se. So we have these fun little traditions that we do around Continuum. You know, we always say we love Mondays. I personally, as a human, love Mondays. It's when I have my most energy. It's hard for me to sleep in on Mondays, like right around 5 a.m. I'm like, let's go five, you know, five o'clock on Friday. I'm beat. But 5 a.m. on Monday, I, I'll never be sharper for the week, you know. And so whenever anything good happens, we say, what is it, Monday or something? So we have all these like little inside jokes in our team that make us feel connected like it's it's us, you know, it's just us. And um, the other one, like another example of something kind of just us that we do is we have this fun fact Friday. And everybody just says some random fact about themselves. And it can be hilarious, the stuff that these people put out there. And I remember uh, maybe last Friday or two Fridays ago, um, I had just forgotten about it. And somebody said, what are we not doing fun fact Friday? And this is one of those like crabby engineer types where you're like, you hate this, right? And he's like, no, where's, where's fun fact Friday? And then another, um, very, very serious engineer. You know, she and I were on a call with a client and she's like, I got to tell you, we have this fun fact Friday and this came out. So again, it, it's um, finding things that work for your team. We're a very humor based team. So we love to send out silly jokes and things like that. Um, we also tend to be a very clean team, but some can, you know, take, I would take a pulse of where your team is at, make it anonymous. I'm known for doing polls. I love polls. I love knowing where are people at and ask open-ended questions. What's something mm -hmm. that would make you feel more supported? What do you feel like you're missing from this team? What's something that, you know, would be kind of fun that you think we need to do? Um, and I, I think that also shows I trust you and I care about you. And I would really like to make sure that what I'm doing supports you. It's it's almost like the business love language. You know, what's your business love language? And so if you're not familiar with that, what is it, Gary Chapman, right? right I think that was he's the author, wrote a book that outlines these four or five love languages. And um, so anyway, so I, I think that there's love languages in business. So if you can identify how your team feels most connected and supported, mm -hmm. that's how you can get them to really be able to communicate, work, to, work together better, communicate better together, trust each other more, and be able to say things like, hey, I screwed up, or hey, I have no idea how to handle this. Can you help me? Right. For so the main thing that they need to feel is safe, regardless, right? And and I, I'm always cognizant because obviously with companies, you're busy and you go from project to project that, you know, you're actually slow down to reflect right. um, and honor the time about the project that you've, because obviously there's probably a couple kind of knocking at the door that you need to get to, to really sometimes just recognize some of the basic things that you've done, like to celebrate, have, you know, some kind of celebration or to highlight who's done what, like if somebody yes. stepped up in a way, maybe it's a, not a skill that they're very good at, but you really see that they've excelled you know in a particular area Th those simple simple things mean so much because uh, the person may not think that anybody stops to realize wow you know this person's not so good with this but they they, they put it together and the fact that even you as a leader or even at a, 
somebody else within their peers, even if it's not coming from, say, someone like you, like the CEO, but coming from allowing, creating a space or the context for people to say, hey, by the way, Shabir, I realize that you're, you know, maybe not so microscopic with X, Y, Z, but I saw that you did this and this and this on this project. Wow. How did you make it happen, right? To allow that person also to share their space and to say, you know, this is what happened for me. So and so actually kind of helped me out and they were on the phone with me. And it really allows the, that element, like you said, of cross-pollination of, um, you know, that we're, we've, we're good people, right? right. And right. that we all step up. And yes, yeah, sometimes it's not so pretty when things are going well, um, but we always, we all survive it and we always, you know, support each other in a way that gets us to the, to, to the end point that we need to. And I think that's something that I know as, as a, you know, a leader myself in the various roles I've played, or just for the really, really good leaders that I've interviewed for my books, that they, they, they're consistently in some way stopping to reflect, yeah. how is it that I'm recognizing others? Because I may be the type that's so quick that I move on to certain things, but, you know, it may be that the person doesn't want to be called out of the meeting. But, you know, if you send them, you know, something like a favorite X, Y, Z, um, you know, coupon for something or send them a nice email, they're better with that. And that keeps them connected. So, like, to your point, what's the pulse of who's around you and what are you doing to ensure that everybody is feeling good in their lane? Right. And the things that you reinforce or point out to the whole team, like, hey, Julia did this great thing, or guess what Mark did yesterday or whatever. Um, if you can tie it to something that they think they're even decent at, it'll mean more to them. There's a lot of science behind that. But it also shows the rest of the team what's important to you. It sets the tone for this is what we stand for. This is what we stand for. And um, I just recently, you know, we had um, a client needed our help on something. It was kind of a mess, you know, they, but they were trying to also get a promotion at the same time. So we were trying to make sure that we could make them look as great as possible while cleaning up this mess behind the scenes that another team, it was just got very complicated. Uh, that's why they pulled us in was to uncomplicate it. So anyway, so, um, so, you know, one of the one of the folks on our team was up really late working on this stuff and was trying to collaborate with the client. And so the next morning, you know, I'm seeing emails going back and forth at like 11 o'clock at night. And and we are very I mean, I don't check email on Saturday and Sunday. You will not get me if it's an emergency. You got to text me because I will not see your email. We are very mm -hmm. and it's very important to me that I set that example like, no, you need family time. We've got to shut off at some point. So it's pretty rare for someone to be working that late. Not that we set hours for the most part. I go, look, you're an adult, figure it out. If you want to email at 4 a.m. or 4 p.m., you know, as long as it's done, do it. Um, but anyway, so I saw that back and forth and I reached out to the team and it was a plug for that person. And then how honored I was that we've established ourselves to be this kind of an advisor, that these, mm -hmm. these are the kinds of problems we're helping people solve, that they can come to us with their biggest problems saying, I really want this promotion. This other team that I'm connected to screwed it up. I can't make them look bad, but I also can't look bad myself. Can you help me fix it? And without a gripe, without anything, we go, no problem. You want to talk at nine o'clock at night? You got it. That that as a team, we represent that, that we are servant leaders and that we show up 100% for their betterment. And in return, of course, I mean, anybody who's watched or heard anything that I've ever done, I quote this a billion times, but Warren Buffett said this years ago, love is an interesting thing. The more you give, the more you get back. And I think that applies to business tenfold. If you can really look and, and same for leadership, if you can really look and say, okay, this is what we do. This is what we stand for. And if your compliments or your recognition can acknowledge that for the greater team, I think that can have a pretty significant, um, you know, punch to it as well. It's, it's more of a show than tell, which I think can be even more powerful for teams. And another part to it too is um, even when things aren't going well, the way the, the leader approaches it is, is to become so, so key, right? So yeah, things that are like, you're, you know, maybe there's things that are, you know, off kilter and you're off and you know that there's a lot of moving parts and how they approach it becomes vital, right? Because if you're like, go after someone or a couple of people because it's not happening. Everybody else on that team is looking and saying, whoa, I better not take a risk. I better not 
you know, try that new thing because what if it fails? So I think on the counter set to, to what you're saying about highlighting everybody, but it, it's there, it's also the, the way they approach just generally people with, like you said, I'm going to say love and respect that we are all flawed and we all make mistakes and we are all capable of it, but kind of what can we learn from it? Um, and the approach of the leader in that space really, really makes a difference. Yeah. Yeah. Couldn't agree more. It's, um, and I, I, you know, in, in law, they teach you, you know, show, don't tell. I can't tell the jury. Well, they, well, he didn't murder him. You know, <laughs> that doesn't work. You have to show with evidence and, and the way our brains work, um, you know, that's very effective. So by doing something like that, you're telling your team, you know, this is a safe spot. You, you're okay mm -hmm. to try new things here or to your point, your words, words matter. Your words could be saying, this is not so safe. You cannot try new things here, or you cannot come to me, or you cannot blah, 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 blah. So especially as, um, you know, again, words matter, especially as you're choosing how you want to influence your team, you have to be pretty intentional about those things because the impact is much bigger than we realize. So Sabrina, I know we're almost at time, but what I want to, I would like you to speak to any CEOs, um, either in the tech sector or just you know, people that are going through, um, we're all going through the same things in, in, in the financial time at present. And what kind of things would you tell them to, what might be two or three top things they should consider um, to get their teams through um, the bit of the uncertain times that we're, we're already in it, but that we're going to continue to go through in the next little while? Specific to teams, I think you, you, you have to sit down and reflect. I call it an investment block. And I believe strongly that if it's not in your calendar, it's not going to happen or it's not going to be intentional. Sit down and block out hours on your calendar and do not let them move and say, what are we going to stand for? What's the vision? How are we going to get there now? No longer the days, of course, for a five, 10 year business plan. But you can at least say this is you can paint the picture for your team. And I think, you know, I, I, I kind of think of this as like a child. If you, if you stick a child at night in the middle of an open field, they're terrified. But if you put up a fence, maybe they feel a little safer. If you put up a, a house and a roof and, you know, some toys in there, all of a sudden they feel incredibly safe. People need boundaries. They need direction and structure to feel safe. It's just sort of innate in us. And, um, I think as a leader, the best thing you can do is create safe boundaries and a vision for your team to go, this is where we're going. This is what we stand for. Yep. Times are bad because by the way, you should not lie to your team. I think that's a different form of gaslighting. And I think it's very dangerous for leaders to say, no, everything's great. And you're like, well, we don't have sales for the last 12 months. What do we do about that? You know, no, everything's not great, but I got it. Here's what we're going to do. John, you're doing this, by the way, pull in your team. I am not. I've never been, I never want to be the smartest person in the room. If I am, I'm doing a lot of things wrong. You, <laughs> you built your team for a reason. John, you're doing this. Jamal, you're doing this. Tamara, you're doing this. This is how we're going to get out of this problem because we've built this incredible team and this is what they're each going to do. These are the expectations that we're going to get there. This is how we're going to work together. This is the kind of expectation that I have and then live it. I think it's very easy to, to to say something, to bark something, but then not to do it. You know, the people who say, hey, work-life balance, but then they call you, you know, at five o'clock on a Saturday. You right, know? exactly, like, oh, exactly. So no work-life balance then. Okay, so just kidding, you know. Yeah, so I think you've got it. And then the second part is live it. I think that's the part that builds trust. You can mm -hmm. paint a beautiful vision, but if you don't follow through, uh, you're only halfway there at best. You know, so I would say the, the top two things is be very intentional about your vision, how you're going to get there, who's going to help you get there. Be very clear in your communication and make it a team effort and then to live it, you know, practice what you preach, make sure that you're doing that. Um, and then other than that, like I like we talked about earlier, get a pulse on your team. It, it, I just feel uncomfortable about this sort of preaching from the ivory tower. It, it feels disconnected just in talking about it. Get a pulse from your team. If you can do it anonymous, there's great tools like SurveyMonkey and things like that that are free. A lot of these communication platforms have polls that you can do for free. There's things like Kahoot, 
There's another one. There's all kinds of different platforms that are free that you can get anonymous feedback from and have fun with it. I think that's the other thing is, you know, people love humor. They like having fun. Enjoy your life. This is it. So have fun with it and, and enjoy your team. You've built them. You've gotten them together. Have some fun because just because times are difficult doesn't mean that it have to be bad. Well, thank you. It's been amazing. So for people that want more of Sabrina and this vibrant energy that yeah. she's got, where, yeah. where can people uh, get a hold of you if they wanted to um, find out more about, about your company? And maybe you can share with them a little bit about your company. Yeah, yeah. I always say, don't do it. It's a trap. Um, <laughs> but no, uh, if you want to find me, Sabrina Schaefer, S-H-A-F-E-R on LinkedIn. I do not have other social media because it's just not my jam. But um, if you do follow me on LinkedIn, you will see I do this thing called Fear Forward, where I do the scariest things in my life that I can possibly think of, and then I do them publicly online. And uh, all the way from running marathons to having very scary conversations to talking about unconscious biases, to posting pictures of me crying, talking about my childhood um, as a you know homeless immigrant, to, I mean, you name it. Anything that scares me, I do it on that platform. Um, so you're welcome to follow me on LinkedIn and reach out to me. I love to meet new people. Roxanne, that's how you and I met, and I couldn't be happier about it. If you want to know a little bit more about Continuum, the company, the full name is Transformation Continuum, and you can find us at transformationcontinuum.com. Awesome. Cool. Thanks so much again. So what am I walking away with? Um, love and trust and Good. vision. Ooh. And we can all get through it together. Um, because good times will come again, but we're, we're hitting some bumps and it's the reality of business. It's cyclical. It always happens. So for everyone out there, um, if you're wanting to get a hold of me, I will be launching my new book on June 10th. So, uh, we're going to be into pre-launch at this point. So if you'd like to go and uh, pre-order a copy, just go to roxanderhodge.com forward slash book. You'll get all the information there. Um, and I would love for you to, at some point, I will be having an online uh, launch. Um, I'll let make sure that everybody knows so they can come and hang out with us. Uh, Sabrina, again, thank you so much. Always lovely spending time with you. And every, everyone, thanks again for spending the time with us. Take care and we'll talk to you soon. Bye, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to Authentic Living with Roxanne, creating the space for positive, healthy change. Roxanne is a keynote speaker, psychotherapist, and coach. To work with Roxanne, visit roxanderhajcom slash blueprint. We'll see you next time on Authentic Living with Roxanne.